Use the former to scrub your behind, and the latter to clean the toilet seat and area. They're normally made to look clearly different from each other, so one won't be mistaken for the other. <laughs> so, listen, I have to be perfectly honest, I am not 100% certain how to intro this video. Um, I guess I'll start with a fun little fact, and that's in my time working with Ed, I have noticed something of a trend, and you would be so, so surprised at the frequency at which people write in asking specifically about things like toilets and sewers in places like Waterdeep and Neverwinter and otherwise the general realms. It is so much more frequent than you think. Um, so that's what today's video is. Uh, I am Ivan with Many Realms and today Ed Greenwood is here to tell you all about sanitation in the realms. If you're enjoying this series of realms lore videos, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss one. Um, and you know, share it around. Who knows, maybe your GM or one of your players will get some value out of it. Also, don't forget to check out Ed's shop for your opportunity to get your hands on some super sweet adventuring gear. Let's not flush that opportunity away. But for now, I'll pass it on over to Ed, and uh, I really hope that this helps your campaign. Truly, I do. I had to work all of this out first for my Mert stories as early as 1967, because Mert's foes had a habit of attacking him while he was answering nature's call. But then the moment D&D play began, player characters started using sewers, garter robes, and night soil wagons as travel routes. So everything had to be worked out and welcome to Sanitation in the Realms. Sanitation in the Realms depends on where you are and your wealth or social class. If you're traveling and stay at a way in, you'll be like most middle class city folk. Chamber pots under every bed, typically emptied by the youngest non-toddler family member, with accompanying mugs of leaves for wiping and flower petal or lime-scented water for washing and diluting the pee or covering the poo, as in covering the poo as well as the chamber pot lid to keep the smell down, emptied into a backyard covered bucket which gets taken to a cesspool or cesspit or copper a dump to the local night soil wagon, as in one copper coin per pot dumped into the wagon, as shown in a scene in El Minster's Daughter in which the female protagonist empties her pot into the night soil wagon along with all of our neighbors coming down to empty theirs. Some cities have sewers, usually because they're coastal, tidal flushes, and or have streams and rivers running through them that can be diverted to flush out the sewers. In most cities, there are indoor rooms, known as garter robes, or less formally as jakes, consisting of a seat, a gravity drop pipe descending from underneath it, and large jugs of water for washing and flushing, as in flushing down the pipe to a cess cistern in the cellars, which has a turn the balin, open the board, sluice connection to the sewers, so the sewers can't readily back up into your cellar. Some homes have wiping cloths washed by servants or family members, and some have bum sticks. Scrap cloth is tacked to a branch used sort of like a back scrubber, only uh, lower down. Some have wiping leaves, and many have scented water to purge smells and potpourri, crush scent bowls or pomanders in the realms. In rural areas, most farms, homes, taverns, and inns all have outdoor privies, outhouses, under an open-walled roof to keep water out, handy heaps of sand and lime and shovels, large and small. You use it with the aforementioned leaves or bum stick. There's a ewer and basin for washing, and when you're done, a sprinkle of lime and a shovelful of sand go down the hole on top of your offering. When the hole's full, the outhouse gets moved and the hole gets limed heavily or a fire lit atop it, and then after the fire dies to ashes, and by the way, no fires are ever lit in forest loam locales because, you know, the fire just takes out the forest, covered over with earth and left. Successive outhouse moves causes the ring garden that you'll see around some homes. Large city. In a city like Waterdeep, clubs, eateries, and the home of the noble and wealthy have garter robes, toilets, that flush with foot treadles. The water comes from rooftop rainwater cisterns that can be filled in dry weather 
by pumping. Hand pumps serve most wash basins adjacent to them, and everyone has a standing right by ewer for pouring water to flush and for carrying water elsewhere or dumping it over your head when washing hair. And everywhere has a bum stick and a sluices stick. They, they go by various polite or regional names, such as Athorn and Dollard, respectively, in Waterdeep. Use the former to scrub your behind, and the latter to clean the toilet seat and area. Both otherwise reside in receptacles of pleasantly scented water that submerges their business ends. Both are stout, short sticks with old towels, hand cloths, or scraps of clothing affixed to one end. They're normally made to look clearly different from each other, so one won't be mistaken for the other, <laughs> but otherwise tend to be of similar construction and form. If you're enjoying this video, please leave me a like. And if you're so minded, please subscribe. Please hit the bell icon down below so you'll see all the future videos. Your support and those of Realms fans like you is what make all of these videos possible. So if you'd like to go to my Patreon and, and become a protector of the Realms, I love it. Thank you. Less affluent addresses may lack a cistern or access to it for all garter robes. When that access doesn't exist, the facilities will still have the two sticks and the ewer and a by-the-sink hand pump, unless it's elsewhere and the water is brought to the garter robe by ewer, and the water from the ewer is poured down the garter robe to flush it. Busy garter robes may have a row of filled ewers with house rules about taking down an empty one and returning it filled if you poured it. Most rooftop cisterns are screened to keep dead birds and critters and leaves from clogging the water flow. And they drain roof slopes into the cistern, which has its own overflow into any rooftop garden or greenery, and then another overflow into downpipes, which take excess rainwater down to balcony plantings or window boxes, and then the street, where drainage gutters should carry it away, often using alleys for this rather than the major streets. Really poor addresses and garter robes or servants' sleeping areas may use chamber pots, metal or ceramic vessels, with or without lids, but usually having stout handles. These have to be carried and emptied into a night soil bin, often a water-filled cistern to keep the smell down, out of which solids are dipped with a giant ladle that hopefully doesn't get used for anything else, uh, into a night soil wagon to carry it away. In Waterdeep, that away destination is usually the Rat Hills, well to the south of the city. Many nobles buy stable waste and the manure of their own stables for wagon carting as fertilizer to their own country estates. Up the Amphail Road, they would very rarely trust dung from any other source for this purpose. Some older guard ropes flush with pull levers on the wall rather than foot treadles. Being downstream, with Silvery Moon as an example, North Bank Silvery Moon has sewers flushed by three now totally buried streams, like London, England's many long ago roofed over streams that became open sewers and so were buried without controversy in our real world. See the classic reference work, The Common Stream by Roland Parker, if you're interested in such things, that flush in the realms into the river Rawven. South Bank Silverman has no sewers and uses the night soil wagon system, leavings being taken far south and spread on open wilderlands to rot down. Any large city freshwater flush system uses weir grids to collect solid filth, muck, that then gets taken away by wagon and dumped far from noses in the city. Waterdeeps goes from the harbor grids to the Rat Hills south along the coast. Golgothra, and that's the collective term for Otiogs and neo otiogs devour human waste in such dumping grounds and serve the same function in some castle, monastery, abbey, and isolated inn middens. So, Silvery Moon has garter robes in the nicer inns, flushed by hand water jug down narrow pipes into a water-filled cistern, which cuts the smell, which is regularly sweet-scented by the staff and dredged by night, out to a night soil wagon, and so away south for spreading, or flushed 
by the underground streams into the Raven, where downstream of the city weirs catch the muck and its bucket scoop giant brush pans, like the digging buckets of modern real-world backhoes and long-arm excavators strung on ropes to both riverbanks and, yes, dragged back and forth by teams of oxen up crushed rock ramps out onto dry land from the weirs into night soil wagons which, yes, take it away for spreading. Welcome back to Realm Speak, and this week, what we're doing is... Tiefling. That is the player character race, or maybe it's just a, a funny looking character with ears that you see standing near you in a dock or in a busy street or in a bazaar. Tiefling. That's how it's normally pronounced. Now, some regional accents of the realms, like, as for everything else, could pronounce it slightly different. Tiefling. Tiefling. And stuff like that. That's okay. Tiefling won't steer you strong or wrong, and a tiefling won't be offended if somebody says, oh, that's a tiefling, because that's a saying, yeah, that's a human. It's the equivalent, so it's okay. It's like saying, that's an elf, that's a dwarf, that's a tiefling, it's a tiefling. 